Hi, this is Kevin. Welcome to my tutorial for the program Analyze Slot Machine Tries. And in this program, we are going to be uh, processing a file that we've seen before. This is the slot values uh, uh, .text uh, file. So we've seen it in, in um, the coding assignment for a previous uh, chapter. But uh, from the starter files, here I've got the starter files, I include start values.txt. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into my uh, project under the data uh, directory. And you, as you remember, uh, there, there are five uh, color values on each line. It's meant to be like a slot machine. And, uh, you know, we're looking for a certain amount of uh, matching, right? Uh, but we're not using that for the, this uh, time. We're just uh, trying to analyze the values that are here. And when we run our program, okay, uh, the result that we're going to get I'm going to I'm going to show you from my already baked uh, version. Okay, the result that we're going to get is like this. So we're going to read all the records, right? And we're going to tally up uh, how many blues uh, we counted, how many greens, how many oranges, purple, red, and yellow. Okay, so we're going to count all the color names that exist in the file and just how many there are. And as you can see, they're pretty close to each other because I generated these data randomly. Okay, and uh, you would think that each of the colors would probably come up an equal number of times and really they're, they're not too far off. Okay, so that that shows you that our, our, uh, our random tools from the random uh, package are working pretty well. All right, and that's all we want to do for this uh, version that we're doing in the uh, the uh, tutorial. Okay, and uh, the program is called Analyze Slot Machine uh, Try. So each line. Uh, in the file again is a try on the slot machine. You know, you pull the lever, and it uh, comes up, and uh, and we see um, uh, five uh, colors. Okay. All right. So uh, let's uh, create the program file. We want a new uh, Python file called uh, Analyze slot machine uh, tries and I'm not going to do pseudocode on, on this this is a, a pretty typical thing where we're going to we're going to open the file we're going to go through it with a four in and uh, we're going to uh, we're going to accumulate some uh, values okay so uh, let's get started okay so I've got let me bring over my doc string and the beginning of my main okay so uh, uh, let's see oh Ignoring duplicate values, that's going to be a part of your assignment, not a part of this, uh, not a part of this um, tutorial. So it says uh, counts uh, color names in the slot machine file on the same line. Uh, nope. <laughs> uh, counts uh, color name names in the slot machine file there we go that's all that's all it does okay all right so let's look at uh main 
So this is the same thing we've been doing for like all the files that we have. Uh, could we factor this out in its own function? Yes, uh, we could definitely do this if we wanted to. Um, this is a pretty short program. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it here. You can factor it out. I see that you folks uh, already are, are developing a, uh, uh, a sensibility where you don't like a lot of clutter in your programs, and that's good. Okay, so uh, what do I have here? Well, I have a dictionary called uh, Color Count, okay? Um, and uh, a color count is... Um, it's going to be a dictionary where the key value pairs. Uh, the key is going to be the, the string that is the color name. And then the value is going to be the accumulation of how many instances we have found of that uh, color name. All right. All right. So those are, uh, that's our initialization. And let's get to our processing, okay? So this is our processing and file close, okay? So we open the file, we processed it, we close the file. Okay, so for line and in file, okay, uh, we're going to split the line. We're not passing a parameter to split. So that means it's going to split on spaces. And that's going to be in a list called slot values. We're not going to unpack it because we really, we want to deal with it as a list. Okay. So we're going to say for slot value and slot values. Okay. So we're going to get them one at a time. Okay, there are five, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, or mm, probably if you want to think about the in true index uh, values, zero, one, two, three, four, right? So uh, we say the color count with the key of slot value um, gets color count get, so we're going to get the value from a uh, color count, okay? And what are we gonna pass? Well, we're gonna pass uh, uh, the slot value, okay? So when we, we do the get, we have to provide the key. So that's the key that we're on, okay? And it's going to bring back um, the value that's already stored. Again, it's a key value pair, right? So we provide the key, we get the value back, okay? And then we're gonna add one. And then we're gonna take that amount and we're gonna store it back in to the dictionary using the same slot value. Okay, what if it's not found? Well, if it's not found, we're gonna take the value zero. So if it's not found, we haven't counted that color yet. Okay, so it's a current value is zero. Then we do the plus one. So we're storing a one back. So that works as well. Okay, so we just go through all the lines. I think there are 5,000 of them and we just keep accumulating them. Okay, well, that looks good. Okay, and we come down and we close it. So are we done yet? Well, no, we're not done yet. Okay. Uh, we need to report this. You'll remember that we had a, we had a report, okay, in which we were giving the colors. They look to be in alphabetical order, right? And then the, the accounts, keys, values. Okay, so we've done the accumulation. Now we just need to to uh, do the report, okay? So, let's do the report, okay? 
So the report is going to go right here. And again, maybe you're going to want to refactor this a bit. This is starting to look at, yeah, it's looking a little shambly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it still fits on a page, so it meets that. It's all one problem, so it's all about the same thing. But I'll admit it's getting kind of messy, right? Okay, so let's look at this. So um, here's the issue that we have, okay? Um, the uh, key value pairs that are in a dictionary are not in any reliable order. They are unordered, okay? So we need to find a way to process them in order because we would like to show the colors in alphabetical order, okay? Now, one of the things that you can do is that you can call a method on a, on, on a dictionary, the method keys, and it will get you a sequence of the key values, okay? Now, some places where you look in, uh, oh, around the net in uh, kind of uh, tutorials and documentation, it's kind of implied that this uh, sequence that you get back is a list. It's not a list. It's a sequence, but it's not a list. So if we want to treat it as a list, which we definitely do, because we want to sort it, okay, well then we have to enclose it in list in order to, to convert this compatible sequence, but not a list per se, to a list, okay? So then I have a list called these keys, okay? And I sort it, all right, now, do I need to tell it uh, which uh, field to sort on? Well, no, there's only one field. It's a list of strings, okay? And it knows how to sort strings, so we don't have to tell it how to do it. Um, if you're sorting one of the, one of the basic uh, types, like string or int or float, um, you don't have to tell it how to sort it. It knows how to sort it. Okay, so this is going to sort in ascending order. Okay, and now we're going to print out the report. So we're going to skip a blank line. Okay, and then with an F string, we're going to print out a column headers. So we've got a color. Um, and then the formatting says justify left 10 characters wide. And then we've got count, and then the formatting says justify right seven characters wide. And then we just um, go through the list for this key and these keys. And you'll notice here, one of the things that we could have done when we kind of unloaded the dictionary is we could ask for a list of items instead of a list of keys and that would have given us uh, a list of uh, tuples uh, that were key value pairs okay we don't really need that okay and here's why we don't want to sort it in anything but key order okay if we wanted to sort it in the value order we would have had to do that Okay, but we just want to do it in key order. We just get a list of keys. We sort the keys in alphabetical order. And then we, um, we use the get in order to bring back the, um, the value. Okay, so we say uh, on the detail line for the report. Okay. We say uh, we want to print a, an F string. So we've got this uh, key, that's the key that we're on, uh, left justified 10 wide, and then color count dot get this key, that's going to get us the value, uh, formatted seven characters right justified with comma separators. Okay, and that should get us what we want. Now, um, let's 
somehow I've lost my code. But I think that's all we need except for a uh, call to main. Let's do that. I was accidentally uh, typing into the wrong uh, copy of the uh, pie chart. That's not good. Okay, uh, so that looks like it. Okay, so we we prompt for the file name. Uh, we open it. Uh, we set up the dictionary. Uh, we go through the file and we uh, we do the counting in the dictionary. We close the file. We retrieve the keys and we sort them. And then we use the keys to print a nice little report. Okay, and let's uh, give this a run. And let's analyze slot values dot txt. And it didn't like that. Oh, I wanted slot values dot txt slot values.txt and here is our little report okay so pretty easy stuff right um uh pretty cool whenever you want to whenever you want to count things and the the number or the nature of the things that went account is is not really known at the beginning right it turns out that a dictionary is is a great structure to you know to hold them in because um you can store the counts by you know key value pairs and so you don't have to know what the keys are before you go through the data okay so this is uh this is uh, this is kind of like our word counting. Uh, well, in a way, it is word uh, counting because that's what we did. But it's a more structured kind of a word uh, counting than the one uh, that was shown in the Zell text. Okay, now you're going to do something pretty similar to this, but you're going to have to find a way to get the duplicates, the duplicate values off of the line. So I'm not going to show you how to put that code into this program, because of course that's the challenge for you. But I am going to show you how to get the duplicates out of a list. Okay, so let's do this. Back in our starter files, we have a program called Remove Duplicates. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it in uh, my project. And I'm just going to walk you through this. Uh, OK, so you can kind of understand uh, how to remove uh, duplicates. And this code will work for uh, data of any type. Uh, in your program, you're going to have a list of um, color names okay they're going to be strings in the program that we see here we have a list of ints but uh, again the code will work uh, either way okay so because this is a demo program you know we're not getting data from the user we're kind of simulating that by it, 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 it putting it together a list so this is a list of the integers from one to five with uh, duplicates. So two ones, three twos, a three, a four, and two fives. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to get rid of the duplicates. So we print includes uh, duplicates, and then we show the version with the duplicates. And then we call a function uh, called create new list without uh, duplicates. So we're going to create a new list from the old list. Okay. Uh, we're not going to change the original list. Uh, so we're going to pass. We're going to pass in the list with uh, duplicates, 
And then uh, we're going to get back a list without uh, duplicates, a new list without duplicates. And we're going to print that and we're going to show it without the duplicates. So let's run a test before we look at the code. Okay. So uh, including the duplicates, uh, the two ones, three twos, a three, a four, and two fives, and then with without the duplicates, just one, two, three, four, five. So you can see that clearly it got rid of the duplicates. Okay. So I'm going to show you the code for uh, removing the duplicates. I'm, I'm going to show you two versions of it. Um, these are probably the two most popular versions you'll find if you Google this. Okay. The first uh, version uh, creates a new list from the first. And I, I call this the intuitive uh, version. Okay. So we come in into the function, create new list without uh, duplicates, and we have our value list as a parameter. Okay. And uh, here's a comment that says that we're currently looking at the intuitive version. The more clever versions down at, at the bottom, and we'll do that second. Okay, so uh, we need to create a new list to hold the answer. We're, could we change the list that's been passed to us? Yes, we could. We can change parameters that have been passed to us, uh, provided that they're mutable types. And lists are a mutable type, so we could have done it. But we define this as create new lists without duplicates. It's pretty clear that we're not changing the list that's been passed to us. Okay, so we create a list called unique values. It's empty. Okay, and now we iterate over the list that we got in for value in value list. If value not in unique values, then we we append the value to unique uh, values. So the first time we find a one, well, it's not in unique uh, values, and so we add it, okay? But the second time we read a one in value, uh, if we say if value not in unique uh, values, yes, it's already there, so we're not gonna add it again. So that's how we only add one once and two once and five once. Okay, so when we come back, again, if we run it, uh, we've gotten rid of all the duplicate uh, values. Okay. Now, I told you there's a more clever version. Okay, well, let me toggle the more intuitive version into a comment and toggle the more clever version out of a comment. And first, let's run this more clever version and prove that it works. Okay, it's hard to see that it works when we already have the answer down there. So let's run it like this. And here it is. And you can see that it does work. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Well, what do we do here? Well, we do some conversions, okay? We take our original list, okay? And we convert it to this other data structure. It's not talked about, I know it's not talked about in the Zell book or not in the chapter that we cover, certainly. And I'm not sure if it's covered in, in, the, um, in the severance uh, book. Uh, but a set is another kind of a data structure. It's a lot like a list. It's just a list of individual values. It's not key value pairs. But it has the restriction that there are no duplicates. So if you convert a list to a set, which is what we're doing here, by calling set, uh, by passing the list to, um, to the set uh, function, uh, well, then we're going to get a set with the same things in it that were in the list, but no duplicates are allowed. So we'll get rid of the extra ones and the extra twos and the extra fives. I think we have an extra five. Okay, so now 
we have a set with the right values, but it's not a list. Okay, so now we could we feed that to list, and then it comes back as a list. So we have a list with duplicates. We convert it to a set, has the same values, but no duplicates. And then we convert that to a list, which is a friendly list again, uh, but uh, it doesn't have the duplicates in it anymore. And again, when we run it, we get this. Okay, now uh, Pythonistas uh, kind of like this more clever version. Uh, because we learn more about sets in like an intermediate Python course. Okay, it's not it typically a data structure that we deal with in beginner uh, courses. There are a lot of applications for it, but this is a perfect application for it. And again, this is the kind of thing where I, I told students for several years that they were to get rid of the duplicates like this intuitive version and then uh, a bunch of people went and found this more clever version on stack overflow and places like that and i thought well if students can find their way there and they like it then i ought to at least uh, cover it so i cover it here as an alternative and you can choose the one that you like Okay, so your assignment is going to be uh, like this, uh, analyze slot machine tries, okay? But before you do the counting, you've got to get rid of the duplicates from that line. So, for instance, when we split this line, you'll remember not too long ago in one of our assignments we were looking for a line with three reds and two blues right so before we come down and analyze this line we've got to get it down to just red and blue not three reds and two blues but a red and a blue okay now I've given you all the tools that you need to know how to do it. You just have to have to figure out how to combine them. All right, so um, that's it. I'm going to leave you to do your work, and I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.